Hey folks, I've been testing out Canon's new RFS 7.8 millimeter f4 dual lens. This lens was done as a partnership between Apple and Canon so that people could take spatial video and photos with a higher megapixel count because if you tried shooting spatial video and photos with the iPhone, it works. It's just not that great quality. This definitely bumps it up a little, but I still don't think this is where it needs to be right now. I kind of have some mixed feelings about this lens and this whole setup that they're making you buy just the R7 to make this lens work. I think that's kind of a money grab on Canon, but it is a lot of fun. And once you finally do get your footage into the Vision Pros, it looks pretty amazing. And now you can also watch spatial videos with the MetaQuest headsets. So let's talk about build quality first because this is a $450 lens, so think kit lens. Think plastic, not the best quality. It's a very odd plasticky lens. There are two dual lenses that are extremely small. So you're not getting much light coming into there. So you can imagine what low light footage looks like in this, not good. These lenses are closer than your iPhone. So you're not gonna get as much depth. When shooting in this 3D style, the farther your lenses are from each other, the more depth your eyes will perceive. The image quality you're getting is much better than the iPhone. You're getting some pretty crispy stuff, especially up in macro shots which is something that the iPhone won't let you do. The iPhone is always like, stand back a little, and that's because it is cropping into your wide angle to make all this work. These two lenses are perfectly matched. They go straight into the sensor, so you're not messing around with any of weird scaling, any of that stuff, you're getting the real image. There's also this very interesting switch over here called adjust, and that will switch from lens to lens, so that's so you can check your focus, because they will go out of sync. And so that's something that you're constantly having to watch out for. You're magnifying into your image on one side, then hitting the adjust, then being able to go to the other lens and adjust that one, make sure everything's good and you can have focus peaking. You have everything that the Canon R7 brings to the table, which is a lot. This is a real photography camera. Open shutter light painting. When you're getting those laser lines, they go right past you when you're looking at this in the Vision Pro. It's a really cool effect and it is definitely a new way of shooting and viewing this material. So I already mentioned some of the pitfalls and some of the tougher parts about using this lens, but it's not all bad. I actually had a lot of fun shooting with this. I love the fisheye perspective. I love that huge view. You're getting so much in the shot, and so you really have to frame if you can frame. That's another thing about this is that framing is very hard. I think that's just something that I'm gonna have to practice a little more with this lens. To really appreciate the 3D-ness of the shots that you can get though, you really want to stick your camera right in the action. You want to stick it right in the center of the crowd. You want to get it right up close to your subject. I always thought, oh, I'm far enough away. And then once you get it into the goggles, you're kind of like, whoa, that's really far away and I'm not even looking at it anymore. But then once you finally get your footage through the pipeline and into your goggles, I mean, it is really an amazing experience that I've never had before. And it has totally blown my mind. And I'm a firm believer now that I really want to shoot everything in 3D and spatial practically, just because it's such a more exciting, immersive viewing experience. You really relive these moments a lot more than just a 2D screen. And then one of my favorite things about this little lens is that you can do macro shots with it. That was one problem with the iPhone I mentioned. You can't get very close to your subjects with this. You could stick it right up in the plant. You could stick it right on the flower up into the bees. I think I was getting around five and a half inches of distance that I needed for it to focus. And that's pretty fun because seeing macro shots in a huge perspective that you can look around in like is pretty amazing and another thing that i've just never experienced before a couple little tips that i got along the way you want to have this camera perfectly leveled or at least horizontally leveled and there's a couple ways you can get into there from the display section but there's a leveling 
meter in the R7 that is very helpful. You also want to have a little dust cloth because when just a little speck of dust, they're such tiny lenses that that little speck of dust would take up a huge amount and you would see this just like blob on the image. So always have a little cleaning cloth and that's also something that I would do for every shot. It's definitely a challenge, but a fun challenge shooting with this thing. So some of the things that were pretty frustrating about this lens, and I definitely think Canon has a long way to go. This lens currently only works with the Canon R7. So if you were trying to shoot VR with the Canon R5 or the R5C, you're out of luck right now at least. I'm not sure why Canon hasn't figured out how to make this work on the R5C. So I was a little bummed out that I had to go and buy a whole new camera with this R7, which I would never buy this camera. Another place where Canon falls is in their app. They have a VR app where after you're done shooting, you bring all your footage into the app, right? Their app looks like it's from the 90s, just like all of their other software. I don't know who's in charge of Canon's user experience or the UI design. They really need to step it up and modernize their software. And using the Canon software to work with the images coming from the R7 was just a total pain. It was very frustrating. There were a lot of features that weren't working. I did not pay the subscription fee to Canon just because I was just so over their software in the first place. So I'm using the free version and they don't give you much. For photos, you're pretty much stuck. They will let you export side-by-side -side photos. They don't combine them for you. They don't turn them into a spatial. When it comes to videos, they'll let you export it as an MV HEVC. So when you finally get it over to the Vision Pros, you get that stamp of approval, the little spatial logo, and it looks okay. It's it's a huge image, which I really like. That's It's really nice to get these big spatial images from this, but still this is not the best quality. It, this still looks pretty chunky, still looks pretty like, pixelated, so don't be hoping for super crispy spatial photos from this. One weird thing that the Canon software did in the movie section, they've been saying you can export it as 180 degree video, but that's not gonna work because the lenses are set inside all of this other lens framing. You can't see them, right? I don't know why they keep saying, oh, you can do it in 180. This is just strictly spatial video in a super wide or almost fisheye view. Like this is not 180 degrees. You will never achieve 180 degrees with this lens. You're gonna have to bump it up to the R5, R5C with that VR lens. So I wish Canon would stop saying that in all of their advertising because it's not true. So the Canon software could not create a full spatial photo. It would just give you the side by side. So I would have to bring those into Spatialfy, which is another app. There's a bunch of apps out there now that allow you to turn your side by side photos, JPEGs, whatever they are, into spatial format for viewing on the Vision Pro. And now the Metas also. So I hope they make the workflow pipeline a little easier to get from here to actually something you can see where you can actually see the magic because that's where it's really at it's not it's not with this lens it's not with this camera at all the magic is when you can finally get these images into your goggles and you're able to really look around feel immersed experience these images and this content more than you would as a 2D image. So I'm not sure if I would give the recommendation for the spatial lens. I feel like some other companies are gonna come out and really nail this a lot better, but kudos to Canon for pushing this stuff. It's definitely fun and it's got me out there shooting again and just trying all my little camera tricks and all that stuff because all of those little camera tricks now look amazing when you get them into spatial photo and spatial video. When you can see the depth of these light trails and these light painting things and time lapses just look amazing in spatial now. So definitely hit that subscribe button so I can show you all the new stuff that we're coming out with this. And drop a comment down below if you have this lens, what's your experience? I, I don't know anyone else with this lens, so I haven't been able to really talk to anyone about it except you right now. So I hope that helped. Thanks for watching, everyone. I'll see you next time.